Music Hall, how a city built a theater and a theater shaped a city. Chapter five, thank Frank Jones. <coughs> testing, testing, are you? Oh, uh, we're broadcasting live today in the alley outside the music hall. People of Portsmouth were thrilled to learn that Ale Tycoon, the millionaire Frank Jones, had purchased this theater from the Pierce family at the dawn of the 20th century. If you come with me now through the alley and we look over here, you can see through these massive doors that Frank Jones built the addition of the backstage that rises 75 feet into the air. The richest guy in town, Frank Jones owned just about everything, including the Rockingham and the Wentworth hotels, and one of the nation's biggest breweries. Jones remodeled the music hall with a beautifully painted ceiling and an ornate gold-leafed proscenium stage with decorative opera boxes. The supersized backstage still operates today with ropes and pulleys like a tall ship. This huge and flexible space made the music hall one of the finest venues outside of Boston. Hello, hello. It was ideal for attracting big city shows like this 1903 theatrical <laughs> production of The Wizard <laughs> of Oz. <laughs> Following the death of Frank Jones in 1902, a newspaper editor named F. W. Hartford bought the theater. Hartford, who later became the city mayor seven times, changed the music hall name to the Portsmouth Theater. In 1905, during the famous Treaty of Portsmouth that ended the bloody Russo-Japanese War, Hartford invited foreign correspondents from around the globe to a free vaudeville show at his theater. Popular plays of the era included Uncle Tom's Cabin, sometimes with all-white actors, and the comic opera HMS Pinafore. Band leader John Philip Sousa and writer Mark Twain also took the Portsmouth stage. Local actors performed here too. They included Bo Garland's Dance Orchestra, better known as the Pepper Boys and a Portsmouth auto supplier billed as King Dynamo, who demonstrated the marvels of electricity, which... What? Hey! What? Ouch!